This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map vs. Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Valley of the Old Farm. But before that, this video is brought to you by Alien Jim and G. Steinford. Thank you for being Farm Barons. Welcome back, old friend. The Valley of the Old Farm can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. On this European-style fictitious map with 93 fields and 18 personable forest plots, you can choose between cereal crops, livestock, or forestry. You can also participate in the industrial and commercial development of the region. There is a newly installed garden market production in the city center to complete all sectors of activity with new vegetables, which include melons and red lettuce. This map also includes a new crop in alfalfa, and I did test the alfalfa. It does appear to regrow after harvest. This map or this farm needs a dynamic new owner to get going, and there will be no shortage of work. To help with this new heavy task, you also have a new farm dealership to work with. This map includes 16 production items as well as multiple sell points. And you can also develop a tree farming activity where you can produce apples, at which time you can sell to the bakery and choose to make wonderful apple fritters. If you know how to invest your profits and negotiate with a banker, you'll also be able to produce oil, which you will need to use for a French fry factory. There's collectibles on this map. Also, if you wish to draw water out of the river, you will not have any issues with that. This map is making use of a generic crop calendar. And this map also, if you are playing with precision farming, does have a custom soil map. Let's go ahead and load in. We are going to use the mods we typically use when we take a look at maps. That's additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. If you happen to load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that you do not own any land nor do you own any starting machinery. But for this video, we are loading this map up in new farmer mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at that PDA. This is a standard size map. And if we take a look at our crops, we do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, in addition to alfalfa, as I already said earlier. Take a look at the lands area. You see, we start out by owning Farmland 94, which is the main starting farm. That is nearly $500,000 to buy. You also have Farmland ID 62, as well as Farmland 52. Farmland ID 95 is a pig area. That can be bought for $90,000. Then we have Farmland ID 93. Now, as far as other things, we also have Farmland ID 2, which is a field right beside the BGA. The biogas plant land can be bought for $85,000, and you will have to also purchase the BGA itself. Buying the land, it does not grant you the BGA. You will have to buy that. Now, as far as the garden area that was mentioned in the description, specifically the garden market production, that is farmland ID 15. That can be bought for $85,000. And then there is some viable buildable areas, which includes farmland ID 96, farmland ID 103, which is over here. Then we have farmland ID 123, farmland ID 121, which is over here at the sawmill and carpentry area. All of those have some buildable areas laid out. Farmland ID 22 is a open cow pasture. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the viable farmlands from our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field, which field or fields are included, then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us Taking a look here, it looks like the farmlands and the fields are lining up one for one, which is just absolutely outstanding. 
It makes figuring out which fields and how much these fields are going to cost so, so much easier. And then we get into the non-field farmlands once we get above farmland ID 92. Now, if we take a look at our field calculator screen, this is going to show us the sizes of each specific field. And then let's go ahead and take a look and see how the custom soil map is being applied to these fields. While the game log says it's a custom soil map, it does look an awful lot like the generic soil map, but I'm not gonna bother kind of cross-referencing that. We've got a fair bit of silty clay and loam to the south and north, and then right smack dab there in the center of the map. Remember the cow area, the pig area is right here. Our main farm area is down here. We've got a, a big hunk of silty clay all around us. The pig area has a good bit of loamy sand and a little bit of sandy loam around it as well. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the generic crop counter available to us in a farm sim 22. And looking at alfalfa specifically, we can plant alfalfa between March and the end of November. Then we can harvest alfalfa all year round. Taking a look at our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops available to us in a farm sim 22. We also have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk. And then our silage, hay, straw, and grass as well. Taking a look down through our production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. We also have the ability to buy bulk lime. We do have a stone crusher available. That is the lime production. We do have the ability to make alfalfa and alfalfa hay. There are no sell points to find for any of the platinum expansion items, which is not that big of a deal. We do not deduct points for not having those things. Just means that we have the standard FS22 logo on the thumbnail. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability to sell separated manure. And then we have our red lettuce and our melons, as well as pallets and french fries and then apple juice and our apple fritters. We have the apples themselves. Take a look at our starting equipment. We start out with a small list of starting equipment. All of it is new, none of it is leased. We do have a pigsty barn, chicken coop, and sheep barn that we own at the start. There is one other animal area pre-placed on the map that we do not own. I'll go ahead and buy that when we get around to the fly around and we'll take a look at that as well. This map does have contracts available. This is a map with a production chain that we own at the start. In fact, we own the farm vegetable garden. And here we're gonna take water and straw. And out of that water and straw, we have the ability to make tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries, as well as red lettuce and melons. This map does include 12 collectibles as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. In new farmer mode, we start out with the John Deere 7810 and the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor. We have the Dudes Far Top Liner 4090H Harvester that is then paired up with the 4090H Harvester header and header trailer. We have the 1986 pickup truck, the Welger DK115 trailer, the Servo 25 plow. We have the Amazon Cinto 4000 Super Cultivator, the Amazon KG3001 Super Power Hero, which is then paired up with the Cynthia 3000 Super Cedar, again from Amazon. We have the Flegel DTS 5.9 Low Loader, and then we round it out with a 600 kilogram front weight. As far as mods and DLCs, we do have the ability to buy a pile of pallets in the shop on this map. That is because pallets will be required for some of the production that is available on the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at the farm itself. Now, one of the first things that we're going to find when we come up to the farm is that we have two custom bale and pallet storage facilities 
We've got one right here, and the bales and pallets are going to basically be stored up here in the loft. The loft, we do have the ability to take the fence down or up. There are two of these pallet and bale storage areas. Both of those are located right here. Then around the corner, we have a third area where we can drop the fence. Now, this is not a pre-placed custom pallet and bale area, but we can obviously store anything we want really up there in that loft. This is where we're going to come to activate our storage. Of course, we have our dump point and unload point for the storage there. We have that same aspect over here for our pallet and bale storage. Then inside of this area, we have a diesel tank. This diesel tank is currently empty. We have our maintenance trigger located here and our activation point. Our main crop silo is located right here. We have our dump and fill pipes. Coming underneath that handy little thing there, we have some more vehicle and implement storage. Vehicle implement storage over here. We have two three-sided silage bunkers with our silage triggers. And then something, a feature that Black Sheep Mining has become known for with this particular map is we also have ramps that we can activate to then reverse our trailer up here and dump into the back of our silage bunkers. We have two of those. We have our large cow barn. With our manure heap. inside the barn area right here. You can then bring your manure and kind of pile it up outside. We have our food trough and straw trigger inside there. We also have our slurry point. And I believe, if I am remembering correctly, there is a way to lift and close these awnings. Some more air in here. We have our milk point. Our cow delivery area. This particular cow pen will hold 250 cattle. We have our farmhouse with our farm garden. So we have a water point there. We have our dump point for our garden. And then we have a farmhouse that we can enter into. Now, a little word of caution. Here we have our sleep trigger. Be very careful because you can see there's, uh-oh, I've done it now. There's no collision on the door or this door. But now I'm stuck. I can't get back out. There we go. So be very, very careful. For whatever reason, they've, they've misplaced the collisions on those doors. We have our wardrobe trigger. We have a nice little kind of kitchen living room area. We do have a back door. That's something I failed to show earlier. We have our garage underneath. Our chicken coop is located right here. 150 chickens. We have our dump point. Then we have a spawn point for our chicken eggs located right there. Now, as far as can you customize this farm? The answer, regretfully, is no for the most part. 
most of the things on this farm are completely pre-placed. You can sell the garden. You can sell the triggers of the chicken coop. But the building remains. I believe you can sell the garage that is directly in front of us. Off in the distance. Here we have the sheep area. We have our wool spawn point. We have our food drop. And around the back we have our animal buy trigger. I was able to sell the sheep area. But when I sold the sheep area, this fence, this gate, remained. So I was able to get rid of the building at least. And I'm pretty sure I could sell this building right here. But the rest of the farm was basically static. So to that extent, we're going to score the map with a quarter of a point with respect to can the farms be, are the farm be customizable? Gives us a little bit of altitude here. And look at this, we've got an awesome, huge cow pasture that goes under the road. And there's our cow. We'll get a little bit of altitude. We have our town off in the distance up there. We have our pig area just below. For the main starting farm. And then to the south, it is all agricultural land. And here by field 75, we have a nice little bale shed or machinery shed. Now, with respect to production, this map, as I said in the description, has 16 production items built in. We have lime production. We have an oil mill, a bakery, a spinnery, a grain mill, carpentry shop. We have a large greenhouse. We have a large vegetable garden, a small vegetable garden. We also have the farm vegetable garden. We have grape processing, which, oddly enough, also makes apple juice. We have a sugar mill. We have a dairy. We have a French fry factory sawmill and a biogas plant so down below we have our spinnery we have a restaurant and our bakery here we have one of the building zones and i believe this was a a secondary farm in the fs19 version of this map possibly also the fs17 version of the map I played this map in FS17 in multiplayer, had an absolute blast with it. That is where I became very good friends with this map. Did not have an opportunity, I don't think, to play with it in FS19, though. We have our grain mill below. Running along the river, we have our sawmill. Then just down from the sawmill, we have our carpentry. The carpentry is where we are going to be making our pallets. We're going to go through these in finer detail here in a little bit. This area also has two places for which you could put down additional production. Our biomass heating plant cell point. Down the road, we have our pig area. We have a satellite secondary farmyard. As far as this farmyard, we can sell this building directly in front of us, and that is it. The rest of this area is completely baked into the map. 270 pigs are available for populating this area. The back, we have our manure area. So we're going to have to come in here and scoop out our manure our food and straw is going to be on the other side we have our slurry pit and that is probably just about everything we're going to cover here 
We have our starting farm right there. Let's go ahead and loop up. We have our cow pasture. Located right here at field 22. And we can sell this cow pasture trigger. So if we sell the cow pasture, the water trigger goes away, the food ring, the food trigger goes away. And then at that point, we've got a grass field or a grass meadow that we can really do whatever we want with. So now that we own this, let's go ahead and 200 cows in here. And we just do food, water, and milk. So we have our water trough. We have our food area. We do not have really an indicator as to where the milk trigger is located. I am going to have to just assume that it's right here by the gate. It does say milk as an output, right? But we just do not see where that possible trigger is located. We have no visual reference. Now, if we do sell the animal area, the fence here does remain. We do not have the ability to sell that fence. We have a cell point over here. And then we have our raisin production facility. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of these. All right, there. And this facility will make apple juice. In fact, let's just go ahead and take a look at the custom production on the map. So as I mentioned, we have the farm vegetable garden, which is going to take water and straw and make our tomato, strawberries, lettuce, red lettuce, and melons. We have wine production, which is going to take stones and make lime. We have our oil mill, which is going to be pretty traditional. Our bakery is going to take flour for bread. Our cakes is going to be flour, sugar, milk, eggs, butter, strawberries, melons, and apples to make cakes. Then we have our apple fritters which are going to be flour, sugar, eggs, and apples to make those. We have a pretty standard spinnery and grain mill. Our carpentry facility is going to take five planks and make furniture and wood chips or five planks and make four pallets and wood chips. Our grape processing facility is going to do grapes and raisins. Or if we bring in apples, we'll be able to make some apple juice. We have our sugar mill, pretty standard there, as well as our dairy. Our fry factory is going to require sunflower oil and potatoes to make French fries. Our sawmill is there, and our BGA is also fairly standard. Now, I have to say, overall, I'm a little, little disappointed in this iteration of the map. It's it's a very nice map. It is it is one of my friends, as I said in the intro, but a little disappointed because in Farm Sim 17, over here, where we had that production stuff, there was a farm there. There was a farm over where we had that buildable zone kind of in the southwest corner. We had the main farm and we had the pig farm. And then we had a little farm up here in town. And the little farm up here in town still exists. And we could build out a farm over there at the buildable zone. And there's a couple other buildable areas, like this one right below here, which we could build out. But overall, this it's not as it's not as inviting to a community or to a multiplayer environment where we have multiple farms. And basically we run 
kind of a, a, an economy gameplay. This map is, is set up as it is presented now, fairly much for a single player environment or a larger community multiplayer. So it's a little disappointing in that respect. I was kind of hoping, right? I was kind of hoping to relive some of that FS19 or FS17 magic that we had on that server, but I don't think we're going to be able to get there. At least not, at least not with this iteration as it stands. So here we have our in-town garden production area. And we will need to buy this land in order for the triggers to show up. And once we do that, we have those triggers. So we have our small garden. We have our large garden. Then we have our large greenhouse. And these are going to require some different inputs than what we had down at the other garden in farm. So let's take a look at those again. So we have our vegetable garden, our large vegetable garden is going to be water, straw, and pallets to make lettuce, red lettuce, or melons. Our small vegetable garden is going to be water, straw, and pallets. And then our large greenhouse is going to be water, solid fertilizer, straw, manure, and pallets in order to produce lettuce, tomatoes, red lettuce, strawberries, and melons. We have our French fry cell point here. Fry shack. We have our cereal mill. This is what I call kind of an in-city farm area. So we can buy this area. We've got some predefined buildings all set up. Across the way, we have our dairy. We have our BGA. Now, I bought the BGA land. I bought the BGA when I was doing some testing, I was not successful in selling the biogas plant. So I believe this biogas plant is permanently installed on the map. We do have two large three-sided bunkers here at the BGA. And then here we have a grain cell point, but then tucked off in the corner, we have our lime production facility. Kind of tucked over here in the corner, we have our interactive icon, our dump point, and our lime fill point. Let's head back over here to town and check out our vehicle dealership. There is another little word of warning for the vehicle dealership. Hopefully, Black Sheep Mining is going to put out a quick update to this because players who like to use the workshop trigger or the dealer trigger here to buy your items, well, you're going to run into an issue. You're basically going to be stuck in the shop. So let's go to our menu. Let's get our Mahindra. Exit the shop, and now we can't walk anywhere. I'm trying to walk. I can go nowhere. I am permanently stuck here until I either tab out or toggle over here to the gas station. So, if you use the shop trigger, don't. At least not until they fix it, or you're gonna have to tab out or come over here and like select the, the fuel point in order to get out of the shop. We have our workshop trigger around the back. And that is gonna be our dealer trigger. So our buy, sell, trade, repaint, etc. Now, with respect to our sell points and being able to sell all the included crops, animal outputs, and production items, we're going to give the map a full point there because we can indeed sell each and every one of those things. We're going to the map a full point because we can indeed. have a bunch of production items built into the map. Let's see what we got going on here. We have our, our, uh, yeah, our, uh, cell point. A little kind of cell point around back. Now behind this row of houses, we do have an area 
where we could build something out. Maybe a farm, maybe some production, maybe an animal pen. We have our animal dealer located right here. So we have our animal dealer cell point to the right. Our animal dealer trigger itself right here. We have an area here kind of at the bottom of the hill that we can basically build in. This is part of the land for that garden area. So we can possibly build something down here. French fry shack. So cell point around the back. Just by the uh, dealer right there. We have our dairy that we mentioned during the fly around, right kind of across the street from that. Our sugar mill. So we're at dump point. Palette spawn point and interactive icon. Here we have that little kind of in town farm area. I mentioned. And then here's our dairy. So we have our interactive icon. On the back we have our pallet spawn point and dump points. Leaving town we go up this massive hill. And we have our line production over here to our left. We have a cell station dump point. And then down the hill, we have our biogas plant. Really well done setup here with our entrance and exits. This is going to be the Elm Creek BGA. So we have two dump stations. We have our interactive trigger. We have our digestate on this side. And then we have our Slurry over here. We have a scale to cross on our way out. And then back down the hill. Come back this way and kind of hit the lower end of town. So the town has multiple levels. 
And here we have our French fry factory. So we have our interactive trigger, we have our dump point, and we have our fry pallet spawn point. And we do not have to deal with collisions on these support poles, so that's that's gonna make loading our pallets easier. Here we have a restaurant cell point. There we have our community garden. Our community garden, but our garden uh, production. So let's head, let's head over to our carpentry shop and sawmill. Across the river we go, but we're not going to Grammy's house. So here we have our biomass cell point for logs and wood chips. A couple placeable areas on either side of the road here. Then we come into the sawmill production area where we have our carpentry shop. Remember the carpentry shop is where we're going to be able to make our pallets. Our interactive icon, our dump point, our pallet spawn point. There. The carpentry shop does not accept logs. So it only is going to accept planks. We have then our sawmill. So we have our log drop off, our wood cell trigger over there to the side. We have our wood chip point. We have our interactive trigger. And then our pallet spawn point is here under this roof. So let's go and make our way through the forest a little bit. Really well done forest. I mean, this was really impressive. Way back in Farm Sim 17. The varying terrain of the forest. And I made doing forestry rather interesting. Hauling logs out of here. Kind of wish, kind of wish we did have the ability to do platinum expansion stuff without having to put down our own cell point. But again, it's not that big of a uh, of a deal. We are running the 1.9.1 update, so there's no issues with this map and that update. As far as other scoring metrics, buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. There are a few buildings that may or may not have the new texturing technique, but overall, the majority of the buildings are, and therefore we will go ahead and give the map a full point there. So this is gonna be where our grain mill is. I like seeing scales at all of these production items for the most part. Our interactive icon, our dump point, and our pallet spawn point. Easy in and outputs. The scales either way. move our way up the hill and over to the right will be where there was a farm 
in previous iterations of this map, but right now it's just a wide open placeable space. And in fact, let's let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at our build mode. So we do have a couple custom sheds on the map. We have a big garage and a small garage. We do have a listed as a modified three-sided silage bunker, then a modified large three-sided silo bunker. We have standard extensions, tools, and containers. No custom farmhouse. As far as our productions go, we do have a couple custom productions here. We have the grape processing unit, which is also going to be taking our grape juice. And we have our carpentry, which is set up to accept our, our output, our um, pallets. Greenhouses, we do have the ability to put down our large greenhouse as well as our garden plots. Just good to see. On our orchards, we have our apple trees. So you may have wondered, well, how do I do apple trees? Right here, you got to put down your own apple trees. One tree at a time. Water will then produce apples. And that's under orchards. We do have all standard animal areas. So while we can sell that open cow pasture that is on the other side of the river, we do not have the ability to put it down. So if we do sell that and we put down our own animal area, we'll need to either use a mod or put down one of the base animal areas. And cows are set up to take alfalfa and alfalfa hay, as we can see here. Horses are also set up for alfalfa and alfalfa hay. Sheep as well. Chickens are set up for red lettuce. Fairly standard decorative items here on the map. And then as far as our landscape, we've got kind of an expanded gravel textures, but not a whole lot of other modified textures and fairly standard plants with a modified grass. A small grass that appears to be missing the English language entry for that, but it's, it's small grass. And that is that. Love to know what you all think of the FS-22 variant of the Valley of the Old Farm. Did you play the FS-19 variant? Did you go back to the FS-17 variant? I'm pretty sure FS-17 was the very first iteration of this map. So we have our bakery. Remember our bakery is set up to also do custom recipe for cakes that involve melons and apples, as well as strawberries. And then we also have those apple fritters as they are listed in the description for the bakery. Dump point interactive icon. Across the street, we have a restaurant, Cell Point. Watch the curbs. There's a couple, a couple areas in town where I noticed we don't have any kind of lower curbing to uh, drive around. Here the curbing has dropped a little bit, but not a whole lot. There were some folks that criticized Silver Run Forest for that very thing, so I did want to point that out. Here we have our spinnery. Peace game spinnery going on here. going to loop around this map runs very well I would assume it's going to play very well for console and and lower range PC systems as well I haven't noticed a single single stutter or hitch up 
in the uh, frame rates. Very nice sight lines on the map. Very, very beautiful map overall. Would be a very, very nice map to be playing in a single player. It would be a decent map for a compute community based multiplayer, a shared farm type of concept. But like I said, maybe I was just maybe expecting a little bit more than this map is providing with respect to alternate farm locations that are pre-established. Clearly there's probably three or four areas that you could fairly easily build out a farm. Um, but, you know, as I said, looking a little bit for hoping, maybe hoping a little bit. That was a bit more of a nod back to the FS-17 variant with some of those pre-established arable farm areas. But overall, the map's going to score very well. If you don't care that the farm is, for the most part, pre-built and can't be modified, things can't be deleted, if you don't care about that, then that part of the score is null and void. Just take it off. Then say the score is out of four. If it's very important to you, then it's an important thing that you're going to want to know. After all, this map tour is for all to enjoy. Now we're going to make our way up here to the last three cell points areas of points of interest, if you will. Round field 42, 43. This is cool. You got like kind of a, a wide turn area here. Rolling hills on the fields. Not super rough terrain, but again, it's also not flat. So it gives you some, some variety, right? That's one thing I think one of the reasons why this map can appeal to players is that variety, that rolling nature of fields, the roads going around and up and down, and there's lots of ways to get to lots of places. You can easily just have a drive, right? So we have our raisin facility, which again is going to be for apple juice as well. Our dump point. Interactive area, out spawn point. Then here we have a cell point, and we also have our. Or no, this is our oil mill, sorry. So we have power spawn point, interactive icon, and dump point. And then a cell point here at the mill. As another option so overall we're gonna give the map a score of 4.25 out of 5 a very very respectable score we're gonna map a full point with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked again if you do not care that the fact that the farm has a built-out area for its farm it's not overly customizable then it's a four out of four, isn't it? Because that is the only spot that we really deducted any points from our scoring metric. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Is this going to be your next gameplay? Are you going to do this in multiplayer or single player? And until next time, happy farming.